Good morning, all. Hope you had a nice long weekend and rested up and finished your leaves and all that. For those of you at home, um, we welcome you and we hope you're doing well. Um, if you guys would stand, we'll open. Thank you. 
God, we, we focus upon you during this wonderful time of year. We're just coming off of a, of a national holiday where, where all people take a pause to be thankful. And we lead the charge because we are thankful to you. We have someone to be thankful to. It's not some vague notion. We have a God that we serve that we are thankful to. And now, moving on from that, we get to, we get to move into the Christmas season um, where we think upon your wonderful work, um, your, your incarnation, O oh Jesus, where the word became flesh. We thank you that you fulfilled all the promises of a Messiah, and we praise our God who follows through. We, we place our faith in you, God. We are thankful to you, God. Um, we thank you, Jesus, that you are the one who fulfills God's promises, past and future. We praise our Savior that conquered sin and seats at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. We praise you. We thank you. We owe you our everything. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Upon reflection, I think that I remember to say good morning probably like 40% of the time that I'm up here. I think it's because I'm just so eager to get through the announcements that I forget. But hello, everyone. Happy that you're here. Welcome to everybody. Thank you. We didn't practice it, so maybe next week I'll do a little practice. Um, all right, so we're going to read first from Isaiah uh, chapter 9, starting in verse 6, and remembering that uh, the theme this week is hope. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Uh, and then we're going to read a New Testament passage from 1 Peter, which should sound familiar to you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Um, and so this week, um, I think it would be good if we kept in mind that our hope as Christians isn't just like an optimism where we have a vague anticipation of something future, uh, some future goodness. Rather, biblical hope is in a person. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. So as we go about our lives this week, um, let's think upon and adore our living hope, Jesus, who fulfilled the Old Testament hopes for the Messiah and who's coming back to fulfill our hopes for glorification and eternity in his holy presence. Let's pray. God, you are so good. Um, we, we thank you for this season, this Advent season. We thank you that we have the opportunity to think upon um, what you've done for us, to meditate upon your word. We thank you for the hope that you've given us. Jesus, you are our living hope. We thank you that you are our savior, that you are with us each step of the way. We thank you that you fulfilled all the hopes of, of what a Messiah would be. We thank you that you're coming back um, to fulfill our hopes of glorification. And we're looking forward to an eternity in your presence. But as we go through this season, we have the living hope within us. We have you as our Lord and Savior. And we pray that we would love you, that we would adore you, that we would revere you, um, that you would give us uh, a, a godly hope throughout this season. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you guys would stand, we'll continue.
False idols of prosperity, false idols of health, false idols that take us from reliance upon you to reliance upon self. And Lord, we ask your forgiveness for how many times we have lived our life as though you are not God of gods. We come today to tell you how much we love you, how much we need you, how much we appreciate you, how much we thank you for every single moment of life. For you give us all good things and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn them uh, for a short time to uh, Matthew chapter 6. Um, today we're going to look 
at Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. I'm going to read the, uh, in, which is part of the, the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to read the entire Lord's Prayer. And I haven't quite yet decided if I'm going to do all three of the requests or just this one. I thought of this one, but <clears throat> I've also been thinking about the other two. Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse 9. Pray then in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's message is Thanksgiving day by day. Verse 11 says, give us this day our daily bread. For the believer, every day should be a day of thanksgiving. We have so much to be grateful for and heaven in our future. Some people pray the Lord's Prayer every day and, and, and done right, it can be life-changing. Each verse is significant. In the first half of the, of the, of the prayer, we're, we're instructed to pray for the Father about his name, his kingdom, and his will. In the second half of the Lord's Prayer, we bring God into the details of our lives. It contains three requests. Give us our daily bread, forgive our debts, and lead us not into temptation. The second of half of the Lord's Prayer covers provision, pardon, and protection. Those are all the needs of life. Everything you need to flourish. Provision takes care of your present, forgiveness your past, and protection your future. Provision takes care of your body, forgiveness your soul, and protection your spirit. <clears throat> Everything that can legitimately be prayed about is right here in the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a mistake to overlook it or, or pray it as a ritual. <clears throat> Boy, I got a cough. <clears throat> In, in Martin Luther's small catechism, he says this about give us our daily bread. What does this mean? What does this mean? God gives daily bread to evil people and they don't even ask, right? But when we pray for daily bread, we are praying that God will help us realize and receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. What does daily bread mean? Everything that nourishes, nourishes our body and meets its needs. Everything physical or material is contained in the expression bread. You're not just praying for lunch. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Mm. Ah. You're not just praying for lunch. You're praying for the physical and material needs of life. You know, I, some people in the past have been offended that something so unspiritual as our basic needs would be included in the Lord's Prayer. But this prayer is our invitation to ask God for the needs and necessities of life. Pray this prayer at night, and you're in effect asking for tomorrow's needs. Material needs are a legitimate cause of prayer. That's what Jesus is saying here. If you need food, pray for food. If you need money, pray for money. You know, the list goes on and on and on. You're a physical person with physical needs. Pray about them. 
We have a dependence upon God for all that we need. And, and all that we have comes from him, comes from his hand. Matthew Henry writes, followers of Jesus are to have a hand, his hand, to mouth, our mouth existence. Followers of Jesus are to have a hand to mouth existence. Give us this, our daily bread is more than a prayer request. It describes the way we're to live the Christian life. If this prayer request is to be real, I want to suggest, suggest some steps for daily thanksgiving. Daily thanksgiving. I have to admit, I, I saw a message called Thanksgiving Day by Day, and it kind of sparked me into this message. It wasn't originally intending to give it, but it's Thanksgiving season, isn't it? The, the first step to daily thanksgiving is gratitude to God for all his blessings. Gratitude, right? It, it comes from the first word of the prayer, give, give. Everything we have comes from God. Clothes, food, friendships, education, employment, the mind we use. James 1.17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. Jesus tells us to pray, we count on you, God, to give us what we need. So gratitude to God should mark our lives. We're to be grateful to God for everything we have all the time, not just when some special occasion occurs. David writes, everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. In other words, what we give back to you you've already, is, is stuff you've given us, whether it be money or time or our intellect or our body. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. For instance, have you thanked God for the splendor of creation? Think about it. He could have made the world black and white, given us tasteless gray food to eat. But God made the whole world for us and painted it in technicolor. He made a variety of foods to eat and said, everything I made, I made for you. All that is enjoyable in life is a gift from Almighty God. So the prime directing, prime directive for the Christian life is gratitude to God for his blessings. Everything of value that you possess, and I'm not just talking monetary things, everything of value that you possess, everything you cherish comes one way or another from God. Tozer says that it's the mercy of God that we draw a sane breath, right? We, we should be gift, grateful for the gift of life itself. You're alive here on planet Earth in Strongsville right now because God willed it. Hamilton Jordan, I think he worked for Jimmy Carter. He wrote a book called There's No Such Thing as a Bad Day. When asked where the title came from, he said, A friend told me, when doctors tell you that you have three months to live, there's no such thing as a bad day. When you realize that life is short and it's, the end is approaching, every day becomes precious. Every day. You don't have time to dwell on the negative. You choose to make every moment count. Someone wrote, only the living can afford to sulk. The dying don't have that luxury. We're the dying. It's been said that happiness is a choice. So is anger, bitterness, gratitude, kindness, patience, and love. You are what you are because you chose to be that way. You stay that way because you choose not to change. One man sat across the table from another, and when he, his food came, he bowed his head to pray. The other man said, why do you bow your head? 
to give thanks for the food. That's crazy. Don't you ever thank God for your food? No, I just jump right in. Well, you're like my dog. He never gives thanks either. He just jumps right in. You see, it's not about praying for the meal. It's about being grateful for the blessing of God that you're able to partake of that meal and that he's furnished it for you, regardless of how it came your way. It's about being grateful for God's blessings. The second step to daily thanksgiving is contentment for what God provides. Jesus asked us to, or invites us to ask for bread, not cake. Right? Give, give us our daily bread, not our daily dessert. Although we're thankful for that too, sometimes more than we should be. We're, we're to pray for our needs, not our greeds. We're to ask God for our needs, not our wildest desires. This isn't an invitation to pray for material wealth. It isn't an invitation to, to pray for people thinking really highly of you. This is an invitation to get God involved in the daily needs of your life. We're to trust God to meet our needs and be content with his supply. The poor of us should be just as content as the wealthiest, right? Jesus enjoyed fine food, right? He, he went to festivals and feasts. The Pharisees called him a glutton and a drunkard. But when Jesus did the cooking, things were different. Fish and bread were on the menu. A, a pastor went to Russia, an American pastor, all the families were poor. But at the beginning of the meal, they thanked God for the food. Then at the end of the meal, they thanked God for what they had just received. Brothers and sisters, that's contentment. Contentment comes from the heart that's pleased with God. Proverbs 30 says, Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. What a wonderful desire. The third step to daily thanksgiving is confidence that God will meet my needs. It's confidence that God will meet my needs. This principle is found in the prayer, right? Give us today our daily bread. Daily thanksgiving is confidence that God will provide on a day-by-day -day basis. The experience of Israel in the desert is an illustration of that. After they entered the desert, they began to grumble. Well, why'd God bring us here in Egypt? But at least we had food. Now we'll starve. Moses complained to God about the complainers. The next morning, there was dew on the ground. And when the dew disappeared, they found wafers tasted like crackers with honey. It was called manna. Is it? Who knows what manna means? Just say it out. What is it? Nobody knew. They'd never seen it before. God said, gather as much as you need to feed your family for only one day. One day. Gather just one day supply. How would you have responded? Nobody had ever seen manna before. How could they be certain that they'd see it again? I'm pretty sure that if I had been there, I'd have gathered pot after pot after pot of manna. And of course, that would have been a big mistake because more than a day supply rotted, right? Manna was the Israelites' daily bread. They were dependent on God day by day to supply their needs. That's how we're to live. Jesus taught in the New Testament what God had already demonstrated in the Old God gives grace when you need grace. He gives strength when you need strength. God is willing to supply our needs, but only when the need arises. We, we don't like to live like that. right? We, we like full pantries and money in the bank. But that makes it difficult to play, pray for daily needs and pray sincerely for daily needs. We know we're not going to go hungry. We don't want to live day by day. 
We like savings accounts and IRAs and 401ks. We, we agree with the world that we should have six months saved up as, as, a, as a backstop in case of an emergency. Yeah, well, we, we live in a different world than the one that Jesus walked in, don't we? Well, the world we live in is a faith and gratitude destroyer. We've become dependent on what we do, not God, what God will do. But this year, you lost 9% of your savings account without ever touching it. More than that, if you had money in the stock market. Just when you think you've got it under control, God throws a curveball or a slider. God is teaching us moment by moment dependence upon him. Life is uncertain. Life is uncertain. You can be doing fine and then the company announces layoffs. Or, or, you, can con or you contract a, a, a serious illness. Your life can get rearranged without notice. God is moving us from self-reliance to God-reliance. Living by faith means living with some uncertainty. God teaches us with little. He teaches those of us with little lessons that those with lots will never learn. And his best lessons are often hard lessons. Does that mean we shouldn't plan ahead? No, no, it doesn't mean that. We're to live as though Christ is returning tomorrow, but we're to plan as though his return won't be in our lifetime. You should plan ahead, but you shouldn't become dependent upon you. The point of asking for daily bread is to teach us to live one day at a time. One day at a time. Daily Thanksgiving means taking life one day at a time, being confident that God will take care of you day by day. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. The fourth step in daily thanksgiving is generosity. This principle also comes from the text. It's not give me my daily bread, it's give us our daily bread. We're not just to pray for ourselves. We're to pray for our forever brothers and sisters. We, we all receive from the same hand. This imparts a bigness, a boldness to our prayers. It takes us from a focus on self and opens up the world. And of course, this runs against the grain of our me first society. In the marketplace, only the tough and the smart survive, right? Whoever works the hardest gets the mostest. But we know that isn't true. We know that isn't true. Some people work 12 hour, up to 12 hours a day, and yet they struggle to pay their bills. The kingdom of this world says, take care of number one. Jesus says, give, and it shall be given unto you. That's the kingdom we live in. I'm going to give you three reasons to share with those who have less. Number one is first, and foremost, everything you have comes from God. I've mentioned that maybe once or twice before. Everything you have comes from God. One president said, you can thank the state for everything you have. Another president said, you can thank yourself. Scripture tells us to thank God for everything we have. Second, everything God gives you is for you to steward. You don't own it. You don't own anything. Everything you have from houses and money to mind and health belongs to God. He's placed it at your disposal, but he, did, he is to dictate how you are to use them. And then third, blessings are given to you. This follows from number two, by the way. Blessings are given you to share with others. Your blessings are on loan to you, in effect, and are to be used for the kingdom. To say, to pray, give us our daily bread, is to see a world of needy people and respond to it. 
to say us instead of our, instead of me and my, displays love. It's a love statement. Most of us will have plenty to eat today and tomorrow, and we probably ate too much a couple of days ago, right? And we'll have more to eat tomorrow after that. We're not all that concerned about it, are we? Yet our world is filled with needy people, filled with it. I mean right here. I don't mean in, in China, like my mom always told me. We're to pray, thinking about the needs that are around us. You see, this petition offers a whole new way of looking at life. If you're not concerned about those in need, don't pray the Lord's Prayer. Don't do it. So daily thanksgiving is gratitude to God for all of his blessings. Contentment with what God gives you. Confidence in his power to supply. And generosity towards those who are less fortunate. Daily thanksgiving is about gratitude, contentment, confidence, and generosity. All of them. All of them. It's a wonderful way to live. It reminds, me, it reminds us that there's no request too small for God. For most of us, I think the challenge is to lay every part of our life before God, before the Lord. We, we live in a me-first, cynical age. Everybody has a hidden motive. A reporter was told, if your mother says she loves you, check it out. What conspiracy you believe depends upon what side of the aisle you vote for. But A.W. Tozer says, a thankful heart, a thankful heart, a grateful heart cannot be cynical. A heart of gratitude comes from realizing that God alone is the source of every blessing you have ever received. I have what I have because God willed it. I live in the United States because God willed it. I live in Strongsville at a certain address because God willed it. Even my problems are sent my way by God who loves me. It's hard to be thankful for problems, isn't it? But we should be. You see, I, I strongly believe in the sovereignty of God. There's no such thing as luck or chance or karma. I mean, the cynic doubts that God exists, or if he exists, I certainly doesn't care. So he gives in to anger and fear. While those who know God know that he knows even when they don't know. God knows when I don't know, and I can trust him that he has got my best interest in his glory in his heart. And instead of giving in or giving up, we give thanks daily. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this really short prayer that Jesus gave us to pray that covers every aspect of life and starts with you because you are the start of every aspect of life. We thank you and praise you that we have a God who supplies our needs, who cares about us, and he turns even those things that seem negative into our good. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. A thankful heart cannot be cynical. How awesome is that?